So, in order to, to keep, keep the schedule somehow, we limit this now to a half an hour. Then we will be on track again. And uh, the idea is just uh, whatever you discussed in your group, and you want to discuss it with everybody, please bring it up here. And then I have a, a strange uh, object. This is a microphone. It's, every, nobody should speak without this microphone, also you won't hear it. It's for the TV recording. So that's, uh, we have a good to voice tone on the TV later. And everybody gets the microphone who wants to say something. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Michael. Michael, genau. Yes, now. Yes. No, geht nicht, oder? Eins, zwei, drei. Ja. Ist nur zur Aufnahme, okay. Ich spreche zu euch als Aufnahme, dann brauche ich trotzdem mein Mikrofon. Wir wollen deine Stimme aus dem Band machen. Bitte gehältst du nochmal? Halt nochmal jetzt. Okay, dann zeige ich euch, dann I show you what we found as a physical expression of this sort of holistic integration. I think I make it so. It's So, <laughs> that was the physical expression of integration. Then we have some questions, found some questions. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, very nice. First, we, we, we had the question how to integrate uh, coaching and uh, OD. This is a question for still open. Uh, reintegrate learning into work, that might, might be one aspect of this question. And integration number three, um, coaching as helping. What means integration for coaching? What do they, what means, or what's the, the, yeah, the distinction between uh, coaching and integration? And then the skeptical voice, never find a corporate doing it. <laughs> and how to uh, connect path of learning uh, to the path of action or path of business. And then the story of our young colleague, Michael Holzhauser. Um, he, he told the story of some uh, HR people. No, that was a manager. Now a manager, Engineer. engineers, who learned, made apprenticeship in, in in some sort of metal crafts, and then had to stop, never touch the metal again, as a, a, so, a sort of psychotherapeutic uh, intervention to 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 learn what is meant by leadership and the new role in this context. Hope. Next. <laughs> what? <laughs> Was this a question to anybody or just just sharing? Pun? No metal anymore is an interesting story. Mm -hmm. I, I wish you shared. No. Should I? Okay. No, no. You decide. No, it came from the time when we uh, tried and. Uh, and to make uh, management development and leadership and organization development program for a large aircraft company based in Toulouse, not to tell her name. Um, <laughs> and uh, we worked with about about thousand uh, engineers from all Europe during one year. And uh, when we discussed, the, the, at the middle of the discussion was the concept of role which is very difficult because in Latin countries, as 
my experience is they don't know what is the role. They know only in France what is formation. And um, they, uh, we told them, uh, they said, uh, we are engineers. And we said, stop to tell people you are engineers. Your job is to lead people now. Your job is no more to, to uh, work with metal. And I said, uh, and this was famous in the company for years, uh, for psychotherapeutic reasons, you have not the right to touch metal in the next three months. <laughs> and it went even on, because uh, I told those people, I was angry in this moment, and I told those people, if you want to go on, build airplanes, buy, go to these little clubs where they buy micro airplanes, and they, you, they use it by sticks. And um, after two years, I met one of those uh, Spanish guys in Toulouse, and he said, oh, you don't know what you told us. I said, no. And he said, you told me to go in this club to do this, and I'm the president of the club of Toulouse, <laughs> of, of building little aircrafts. And when I need the information of the company, uh, I do not go the official way to Hamburg or to Sevilla. Uh, I ask the other president of the micro <laughs> thing when I need the information what really happens in the company on his side. Okay. This is a real example of integration. To me, I, I saw the, the word integration or integrate many times on your slides. And I was wondering uh, what it is exactly you mean by integration, because from my use of language, integration takes place, you know, and something new emerges then. And, uh, and I, as a consultant, I intervene on different levels and I anticipate with the field knowledge I have, with the experience I have, with the pro knowledge I have from the professional background as engineers, for example, and also certain parts of personality, I, I intervene or I plan my interventions as best as I can according to you know, what I can anticipate. But I do not integrate these things. The integration, from my understanding, takes place in the system, the in, you know, in the individual, if I coach an individual, or uh, within the people who are within the organization. You know, the, the talk changes and so on. So, so I had a little bit, you know, I was wondering um, about the word integration. Where's the locus of integration? Am I? Is, an, is it inside me, or you know, or maybe not an or? Uh, but uh, I thought the it's uh, at the client where the integration can take place. Maybe not. You know, I don't know. Yeah, you, uh, you seem to have a different notion to the word integration that uh, I had. Okay. Uh, when you talk about what you, what aspect, aspects you already integrated to make your intervention knowing the hierarchical levels, the political streams, the personalities of the people involved, and all that, putting all that together to make an intervention, then this is what I meant by integration. And you, uh, when I listen to you, uh, it sounds to me as if you use integration, uh, integration into everyday life of the organization. The process of learning and then something new comes. You know, we, we had the discussion uh, like, um, uh, if some informatic people uh, um, do their job as informatics every day, you know, they have their IT tools and look after them. And then uh, a process is started where they are curious about becoming innovative and creating something new. And then they have some fire, <coughs> some fire inside them, yeah? And then they, they, they talk about it and then they really produce, develop new informatic tools or what have you and and that is what I would call is an uh, pro and something new emerges and then they have the informatic know-how and experience and the, the 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 innovative and creative competencies they have uh, leads to something new and that is and the new is then what I would call is the integration so it's a learning process and then yeah and some some new results some some new quality emerges then this is the word I would use, emergence, okay. not integration. Okay. Uh, integration I use only uh, to say we are not allowed to select p 
part perspectives and blow them up and make them very important and do not care how the client or how the organization can deal with that. I say, this is not my business to make clear that the e economic, from economic perspective, it also makes sense. It makes sense from a psychological relationship perspective to coach everybody, but it doesn't make sense for the invest in an HR strategy to coach everybody. And uh, so if I only pick some things that I'm interested in, I, I'm good in, and I sell it as good as I can, I don't care how it will connect to all these other influences and how this can be tied in into the holistic responsibility of the entrepreneur and the whole company, then it's non-integrated. And so I feel the responsibility to make it at least possible that it can be integrated and not invent something that they never can integrate. If I say, okay, for me, uh, it's working with horses is the only real good way to uh, learn leadership, uh, then it's not integrative. Right? You, can, you cannot <laughs> take all leaders to the next farm and have them work with horses. In particular, the other way around, to bring the horses into the, into the management. Uh, or, or bring the horses into the company. <laughs> you, you, don't get, you, don't, you don't get a car, you get a horse. <laughs> Yeah, we had a very good discussion in our group and uh, we discussed in the beginning, we discussed uh, that integrating the perspectives of person and organization is not entirely new, but uh, happens in, 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 in a few contexts. But it may be uh, something rewarding for many coaches to develop in this direction. And uh, we then found out that also for many HR people or people inside, it may be uh, also important to change perspectives from just looking at persons uh, to also look at organizations. And so that uh, a systemic uh, approach is also needed in that. And then we discussed a lot in this, in this group um, about um, what happens if you work with a group. For instance, you have to deal with micro-politics and you have to deal with the unspoken and you find people uh, addressing from different perspectives um, what happens there. So you're not only dependent on what one person tells you, but you can see how others resonate to that person. And it's not only dependent on you, but uh, uh, the whole group is going to develop. And also that a network of groups is possible to bring into being. So this were a few of the ideas I had in mind. We had so much to discuss. Is there anything I should add from that group? Okay, then I would give it back to you. And you told me that uh, most of the ideas, uh, certainly they are not new. I never uh, uh, said, I tell you something that is new. What maybe is, at least in the coaching area, a bit new is putting it together into a programmatic approach yeah. and a, a, a possible shared uh, frame of reference. But you say with your action learning, yeah. uh, most of the things you do, Anyway, uh, do you have a well, programmatic for that? Yeah, it's, it's programmatic. So I come from an action learning background very much. And action learning says simultaneous development of person and organization. And this is, as I understand this one, but the, um, and it's going back uh, to the 1970s or so, and it's an international network of universities and many, many practitioners working on that. And, uh, but what the original founder of that idea said, it's universal knowledge of humankind. They said you can find stuff like that in Buddhism and in Christianity and, 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 and wherever. And, uh, but the interesting point is that it's an open development. And today action learning is uh, a lot uh, developing into critical action learning, it's called. This is connecting um, uh, this action learning approach with critical theory, which means power dynamics are uh, looked at, collective emotions, what it means, and so on. This is very rewarding, and I could imagine that this could be a very interesting field for many coaches too, because uh, you are very experienced on this on a one-to-one -one basis, and doing this on a collective basis could be very rewarding and interesting. And this is why we are offering a lot of uh, also development opportunities for, for doing that. Yeah. One, one of my hypotheses is why do you become a cage? Because you fear power. And you, uh, you don't want to go in the smuggle of the company things and so on. 
And uh, so you become a coach because you have an individual role in front of somebody which is much easier to share than a leadership role in a conflictual situation. This is unfortunately how a part of our colleagues became coach and they stay still in this thing. And in Germany it's very easy because uh, on the 8th of May 1945 power uh, disappeared in Germany. Okay, power doesn't exist anymore, which makes a lot, yes, which makes, which makes a lot of things in international joint ventures, for instance. When the power question comes, the Germans go to the toilet. Okay? <laughs> and that's why, for instance, why in German-French joint ventures, at the end you find every time that the French are the leaders at the end of the, uh, after one year. Okay? Because the Germans, they don't want to deal with power. It has nothing to do with coaching, with organization. Uh, had nothing to do. Power is a special thing. On itself, you find somebody uh, when you are in a very bad mood, but you don't find in your professional context. Sorry, I stopped provocating. Now it's enough. But I, I really like to point out that power dynamic thing because we discussed a lot about. You see this in the group very easily if you have more people, but you you have like no chance to get it out of the talk, and that is really a qualitative or uh, qualitative qual quality difference if you have group and collective working instead of a one-to-one -one. and that's yeah. very interesting. Maybe to add to that, this is about um, making it possible to talk about things which are never addressed in organizations, which may be addressed sometimes in individual coaching but not on the organizational level and this could be the, the very interesting thing about this power mm -hmm. points to and emotion. There was once, there was once uh, an interview with uh, the former Siemens boss von Pira and also with Joschka Fischer. And Pira said, power does not exist. He never had something to do with power. And Joschka Fischer said, Joschka Fischer said, who is in a position like I am and says, power is not sexy, is a liar. He said in German, who says, Macht ist nicht geil, der lügt. <laughs> so this is, this is maybe the difference. So, and there is something about uh, exercising this. So. <laughs> no. no, that's why I, I, I like very much to learn in the Tavistock context. Because in a small group you can be on your left side sits the director of the psychotherapy of the Israeli army. And on the right of you, you have the director of Katanom, the French neutral power. And so uh, power is a subject in, in Tavistock learning and uh, different from a lot of uh, learning settings in Germany. Sorry, it's reicht jetzt wirklich. Those of you are, uh, who come from companies are very familiar with programs in companies. Is is, is there any, uh, are there any reflexes to go in the directions we discussed or I presented, or is it, are we still in medieval times? I can tell a little about the research about another field of practice uh, about coaching and social work and job coaching. And there is a program thinking from the politicians, or the, from the uh, politic, politic customer, and also from the from the uh, social firms who who do this, who uh, design coaching as pro as a program approach. Well, I'd like to add on that. I'd like to add on that because we were an international group. And it was a very interesting discussion. We were covering the role of consultant, trainer, and coach, amongst other things, in as how we could establish an organizational development that would make companies both profitable and good places to work on. And we've seen that we need to differentiate between the three aspects and how to combine them. But there was a major issue that we covered and that hasn't been covered as yet. And that was the point of letting go of the old and embracing the new. And that we have not learned. And it's vitally important, at least that's what we've come across, to reactivate people into curiosity, into 
in the moment into seeing not the challenges and the pro problems and the program as such, but to see their part in it and how they can contribute and how they're being uh, valued and integrated. And that's what we've covered. And we've also seen how difficult it will be to establish this new approach. So what we have to do is create a critical momentum and to make clear from the onset the benefits of this approach. Any questions? Uh, Bernd, you prompted a question on you know how uh, coaching organizational development is um, kind of configured in companies. And speaking from my SAP experience, which I'm still part of, um, there's an interesting, um, I would say, cultural initiative. The internal coaching pool is something which emerged a couple of years ago, but it was a grassroots initiative. Interestingly, the same person who created or was um, creating with other colleagues the work council was at SAP, was the one who created this coaching initiative eight years ago. Now it has become a global um, initiative and I would say this, this is something very much driven by very interested, motivated uh, people. Partly they get 10 percent of their working time where they can, which they can dedicate to uh, being uh, coaches, internal coaches. Partly they do it um, you know, with uh, self-funded, um, uh, giving their own time, but they get some uh, um, education from uh, uh, the company as well. So this is a, a mix of grassroots and then embraced by the top, saying, yeah, this is something which got <coughs> really famous, and there was a Spiegel article about that. So in the meantime, it's really something which you cannot hide anymore. And I think it's a very positive uh, initiative in the sense that this is a kind of um, initiative where employees, colleagues care for colleagues. I think it's a kind of I would say secularis seelsorge, you know, a kind of, um, you know, taking care of uh, the the career um, aspiration, the career questions, taking care of, you know, people who are in difficult uh, situation. Very interesting, <coughs> but it's not interesting. It's not something which had been designed by a professional HR person, even though the one who um, initiated that was a colleague, so um, perhaps this mix of emerging and then being embraced or supported by the top um, might be a natural way of implementing these kind of initiatives called coaching and by itself being a kind of natural organizational or cultural development, but coming from the grassroots. One of the rules we teach our coaches is, if you are finished, you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, it feels like this discussion is finished. So we can stop and have 20 minutes left for the coffee break. And in 20 minutes, uh, we go on with the presentation of Gianfranco. So see you again in 20 minutes here in this room. Thank you.